Yeah, welcome back. This is News File, your most authoritative news analysis platform. And here on News File, we put Ghana first. So, as you know, this show is brought to you by Bank of Africa, strong as a group and close as a partner, MTN, everywhere you go, Ashesi University, educating ethical and entrepreneurial leaders for Africa, Consolidated Bank Ghana, we stand with you. Europlast, where Europlast goes, water flows. We lead, we build home for you. Star Assurance, that's your solid partner. And Rehoboth Properties. Now let me share some of your messages with you. Eja Adam says, something like this never happens coincidentally. The murder has the designs of a well-rehearsed and planned outline, which was executed by those. Uh, people. We await the outcome of the investigations into the heinous crime against Honorable Echo Hayford. Then Dada Lincoln Abraham says, no, please, it is time for our politicians to be serious with the development of Ghana and stop the cosmetic politics and lies to Ghanaians to deal with the real growing um, energetic youth who are unemployed but not increasing security uh, for themselves okay now uh, Onassis Onassis says that uh, the kind of guns the robbers of the Ejuretia episode held I am still living with the nightmare having gone that close they are not small arms. The police who came to the scene after the 1.30 uh, minutes robbery were empty. That is Onassis uh, Kobe. And he says he has been a victim. So uh, <laughs> we're talking about the arms and we're talking about small arms and, you know, light weapons. And he's saying some of the guns they wield, they are not small arms. Uh, they, there's, a, there's a research, that is the OF, OEF uh, research, that says that there are about 600, 600 um, plus, 640 plus million, million guns in uh, circulation. And about 100 million of that is in Africa and we also suffer it. Now, this uh, from Manche Bruce. Manche Bruce says, we live in a world that has walls, and unfortunately, those walls need to be guarded by men with guns. But if you uh, reveal your secrets to the wind, you should not blame the wind for revealing them to the trees. Professor Kwesienin and others must also adopt new strategies in training our security agencies. As trainers, they cannot continue to criticize a system without doing anything about it. My heart and thoughts are with the family of Echo Hayford at this time of great difficulty, Manche Bruce the second in Takrade. And I was talking about some relation that uh, has gotten me to also know a bit more about. He's actually He's actually an only child, okay? And you can imagine what his mother is going through right now. He's an only child. Um, then let me share these other messages. Uh, Tarzan, that is Dr. Charles Rekubrobe, uh, says that uh, regulating, regulate, okay, regulating problems of insecurity in Ghana when we should be hearing solutions, bring on uh, the, the state security couples. Okay. Then Eliasu in Tamale says, very unfortunate the murder of the MP. I trust the police to do anything under the sun to bring the perpetrators to book. I implore the public to di divulge information uh, to apprehend these criminals. There's no security breakdown as being alleged. Then IK writes, uh, teach MPs on how to handle firearms. Nobody can protect you better than yourself. Even if you have a bodyguard, he or she 
will not take a bullet for you. The person can be compromised as well. Protect yourselves and peace. Uh, Mike, Mike J, is that it? Says uh, by tweet, what am I hearing on news files? Security for our MPs and MPs' life is as important as any citizen of Ghana. The general insecurity in the country at the moment is sickening. Then uh, Dr. Charles Frekubrobe again says the same rationale that allows the executive and judiciary to have state protection must be applied to the legislature. The arguments about cost and public insensitivity, public sensitivity are not tenable. And uh, as enforcement is responsibility already protected uh, executive. Okay. Then, okay, so Ijadam, I've already read your message. Um, okay, so we can continue. Yakubu Ibn Chambas. Yakubu Ibn Chambas says that. No amount of increased security will avert this issue of killing, killings if Ghanaians do not take responsibility for self-security. I believe it is a right call by the members of the legislature for provision of state security. But I think that the 275 MPs could take self-domestic defense and protection very seriously. It is unacceptably wrong for the lives of our lawmakers to be tampered with. So that's from Yakubu Ibn Chambas. Um, thank you all so very much for your messages. Um, now let's go to deal with the issue of um, chiefs. Chiefs who are doubling in partisan politics and uh, justifying same. What do you think about it? Uh, there are some of them who say they do not think that the constitution actually, you know, uh, prohibits them from doing what they are doing. And there are others who say um, that provision of the constitution is wrong. We must take it away and allow them to participate. Joining Abdul Malik Kukubako is Dr. Henry Seydudana. He is former minister of chieftaincy and traditional affairs. Dr. Seydou Dana, thank you for joining us. Hello, Doc. Yeah, thank you. Great. Good to have you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, before we go to the question uh, as put out so clearly by Article 27, uh, 276, Clause 1, that says, a chief shall not take part in active party politics and any chief wishing to do so and seeking election to parliament shall abdicate his tool or scheme. What exactly does that mean? Because some say it doesn't include a sort of a gagging order that they cannot uh, endorse politicians or so particular political party candidates and so on. Now let's begin by listening to uh, these chiefs and what they have had to say on the subject matter. Sure. And so, my dear, said Drew Babia, nay, and so you if you near their home, and no come home, say, I hear many penem who say, politicians in any park and a year and a moment drew one at the idea and an anony of a beer. So, yes, you had the hope of Rafra, dear, and never for a same number. So, my uncle, my Yenina 
and they are to me. Name I'm Ghana and Omu <laughs> So, <laughs> One of the promises you made that we are so happy about is your promise to legalize Okada. You said you will make sure it is regularized. If anyone tells you that they are against the legalization of Okada, then we don't agree with them. The reason why we don't agree with them is because we have traveled a lot. And even in China, in their bigger cities, some of these motorcycles and tricycles are used. So when you are voted, please ensure to see through this promise. We have also heard that you say you will pay assembly members. It is very good. Assembly members deserve a salary for the work they do. At least every month they must get something. All right, so uh, Dr. Dana, we have been listening to Otun for or say to two um, to speak yeah. and uh, advising the chiefs. Yeah. Uh, but before that, he had also, uh, President Kufado had been to him and he had made a statement which has been interpreted as um, uh, overtly or covertly endorsing him, where he said that his good works will not be forgotten by a Santeman. Uh, then we played you the sound of Ochehene or Sajifu Amutia for repaying, who didn't mean words at all, was very clear 
about the fact that the president deserves another four years because of his good works. And he actually predicated his support and endorsement uh, on what Otunfo had said earlier. Then we heard Osajifo Osiadeyo Ajiman Bedude II, the paramount chief, Doma, uh, traditional area, also uh, endorsing uh, President Mohammed's policies. He spoke about the policies. Um, so questions have been asked. Are they right to do what they are doing? Well, thank you very much. Um, let me say good morning to my uncle Kukubako and uh, Professor Amy whom I had, and any other people who may be listening this morning. Um, to be honest with you, um, I have not been a very happy man. There are several of things that sometimes I hear read about Chief Tensei. Um, and one is this issue you picked up on the politics. But there are others. A radio station has called to ask me um, on Kumase, um last year um, about suggestions some people think chiefs in Ghana should be paid salary. And uh, why that should not be? I mean, don't I think that is what is my view? And just recently, I heard on the radio, uh, and it's like I heard something to the effect that uh, the law should be passed to make chiefs in Ghana equal, equal to them. You see, when I hear these things, I feel sad because it simply means people don't understand where we are. If a state, a Ghanaian state, the Ghanaian state, which has existed for, for a very long time, which we, we've come from somewhere, we've gone far, we've got to a point. There are certain fundamental principles that have been directed, uh, making the state a state. But let me speak on the chief census side. And some of the fundamental principles are that um, chiefs should not participate at the party party. And the idea being that um, if you look at the uh, African chief census, the chief is like the, the protector and the, the, uh, the, the voice, the spokesman of the community. So in areas where you don't have police stations, if there is danger in the village, everybody will answer the chief's house. And when the chief speaks, he's not that one person, he's, he's, his speech is seen to reflect the, the community or to represent the community. So these are some of the reasons why, and I don't believe in just trying to interpret the black and white letters of the law. If we should look at the letter and spread or the background. So my understanding is that uh, every chief is a Ghanaian who is a Ghanaian is entitled to have a, a political opinion. Of course, you can vote. And of course, they are Ghanaians and citizens. But the issue is about public, publicly. When you, when you uh, come out publicly, to, that's where uh, there can be a problem. And the... Assuming that the chief in my village is uh, openly supporting party A, and I happen to be party B, then there is something happening. Everybody has to run to the chief as the father. You will find that the, those who will be in the party B may not want to go there because they think that man may not uh, open up to them. And that is a worry. There is not enough time for me to probably take you through of ATC. But the problem that we are touching with about is, is not in uh, If one happens, it is the time of King Agri and King Kokoata. How you rolled on to uh, 1896 when uh, Autumn IV, uh, Prampe the first was taken to social. And what happened, the battle of Adibo 1896 between the Germans and the Gombes, and 1900 between the British and the 
the the Ashantis. Why that will give a certain picture where we have gone far that we go to Ghana as a state. And there was trouble between uh, our first president and chiefs, some uh, some uh, big chiefs. And you would find that it's all because distrust. Any time that there's distrust between chiefs and government, it has brought about trouble in the country. It's always in the interest of all of us that they should be understanding and uh, trust. Mm. But the moment there's mistrust between government and chiefs, the government in power and chiefs, there's trouble. And it is to avoid that kind of situation that you will find that the Office of Native Bible which started in 1900, which became Chief Commission after the independence, and which later became the Chief Secretary in 1951. And uh, you, you see that the aim has always been to do what? Put that office directly under the office of the president. The idea being that uh, the, 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 so, the issues are so sensitive that there the, 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 the should be direct contact. Mm. Well, in 2006, we went for a ministry. It's no more a secretariat or a commission. It's not a ministry. And if you remember, the main arguments put forward that time was that if we have a minister for chief he will be able to bring in resources. He will be able to fight for the chief. You know, the chief's entitlement. I don't know if today... Um, protagonists of that view, whether they would think that uh, that has been achieved. You know, the point I'm making is that I don't know if the reason that chiefs will do politics, are we sure that that will bring them what they want? And the, 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 the whole, the, the, the dogma, the, the basis that we've run this system over the years, um, what is it that has happened that uh, we should let our fathers uh, go in and play the game with their children. But what do you say to those who say that we are simply asking the chiefs to act hypocritical, that they should have political opinions but not express them publicly? That's to call them upon them to be hypocritical. No, I don't think so. Um, every, when, you, when you occupy a, 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 a a, a scheme or a, a, a tool. You, you are no more an ordinary person. That's what I explain. Mm. You have assumed a certain role. And it is that role that we hope you to do what you are doing, to act that way. You know, it, it, for instance, when you are a statesman, you are ultrasound. Somebody may make you angry, somebody may say, don't that, you have a duty to put it in a certain manner. Mm. That, that's where I'm coming from. And you see, the the Take, for example, I am somebody who supports the institution of Cape I believe in it. But make no mistakes. There are also some people in this country who don't like the institution. Mm. And so my advice to people is that we, those who are for the institution, we should sometimes know how to. Um, for instance, as I stand, I think what the issues in this country need is resources. Uh, even the allowances, sometimes it takes a long time. People who uh, they are students money, sometimes they are not paid for a long time. And in some of the areas where the chiefs don't have uh, uh, minerals, uh, I'm, not, I'm not insulting, but just put it for like they are poor. Mm. And being a chief is not easy. If we have decided to keep chiefs, then let's support them to perform. I think resources is what I think is what they have been tapped off. Mm. But the, what my point is, let's find out why in the first place was this, uh, the law made that this project. What was the reason? Um, I still the, 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 the communications director at the presidency announced uh, through a media interview on uh, Star FM that 95% of the chiefs have endorsed the candidature of uh, President Akufuado uh, to get a second term, 95% of them. I don't know how he arrived by that calculation, uh, but that's what he says. Now, 
that should, however, give you the impression that this thing is very widespread. Um, there are people who have looked at uh, what happened when he went to the Talency area, for example, and they say, oh, that, that chief or the paramount chief there was already a member of parliament for the NPP, so if he had uh, become um, a chief and uh, Akufuado goes there and he tells him that he will win because that's how they have found, by divination, so to speak, we shouldn't be surprised. Now, you are saying that a chief who was an MP in a particular political party and has not become a chief, and that party is in government, and the president is visiting him, what will he say that anybody will separate him from uh, or put him in a point of neutrality? Such a chief. Well, uh, let me say something. You have only given one scenario. Yeah. And uh, that chief is one out of, we have over, uh, I think we have over 300 parameters now. Mm. You know, it's just a one scenario. But I'm talking about generality. The uh, uh, chief lobbying uh, policies have always been there over the years. But it has been, it's not the norm. It has been like, uh, when it happens, they, they, they sometimes behind the, behind the scenes, they, there are ways of, you know, solving it out. But if we are, if, if we are not talking about, uh, as you say, we are talking about now being generalizing it. Which, that's why my worry, generalizing it. Let me ask the question. Uh, let me, I, I can't ask you a question. Then we, I'm to answer the question. But let me pose a certain situation. Um, you, you know very well that um, it's, it's not for nothing that chiefs are. The constitution has made it put certain There's a reason. You see, the, and you can see that recently, sometimes you will find that there's a misunderstanding between political parties. And the eminent, the, this has been done uh, uh, by the Asante in one. He tried, they will, go, they will go before him and the, the matter will resolve. Now, assuming that we adopt a system whereby chiefs openly make their stance known, and this person is NBC, this chief is NPP, this chief is TPP. You see, don't you think that it will come to a time that if there's an understanding between our politicians, the chiefs too will not be in the position to solve it, to mediate. And no, I, 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 I asked that question regarding the earlier I had asked about the, the issue whether we, we are actually inviting the chiefs to play, you know, hypocr hypocrisy. Because if I refer to the, the Tongran, for example, you can take the same case for, say, the Ochehene, where, you know, the son of that place has the opportunity to become you know, the president. So what is your expectation? That publicly he should not say he supports him um, and then the people will believe that he doesn't support him or what? We seem to go and say that. I've told you that I believe we are talking about generality. Mm -hmm. don't, when you pick on one person, that's not good enough. Now we, we are using, we are using examples. Those, those who have demonstrated a setting by their comments so we are, we are picking them and using them as examples to make the, yeah. their discussion. So, 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 so the point I'm making is that, mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I raised the certain situation. It will come to a point that uh, our, our fathers, the chiefs, will have a problem and they cannot solve it. Somebody, uh, it is a first somebody that then they can bring in the AU or the UN. Yeah, but you see, doesn't mean we cannot solve our own problem. Mm. And at that point, uh, if the AU or the UN comes in, the question will be where are their great chiefs? Don't forget that in Africa we have we have given ourselves a certain name about our chief census. Ghana is the only country in Africa that you can have you find eighty percent of the land belonging to chiefs too. Right? And and we we are happy we are we are happy we have taken that task. You see, if we look at the two system of the constitution, the two lands the, the land, the, they are vested in this, they, they belong to the schools, it's not government. So, the government wants land, they go to, they, they choose the government, but the, the, the land belongs to the schools, and there's a history behind it. Some of 
which is why protest society through us have to do the, something that led to the uh, exile of kids was so if we are going to change some of these things i think uh, it's my view i think we should we should take time mm. change comes and change will come mm. but the way it comes right so the, let me just add this you mm. see the take for example uh, the, uh, what about if uh chief has been politics and at the 270 set up, set up side. What about some people start saying that? Why don't they, they just hand the, the, the lands over to the president of the public to manage it for us? Okay. How about that? Okay. Now, you see, uh, I mm. think that um, sometimes in tradition, tradition, to change tradition, it takes time. All right. Okay, so so let's 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 get uh, let's get the views of uh, Kokubako, and then I'll come back to you. Um, and Kuku, one of your favorite books when it comes to the question of chieftaincy, uh, I'm surprised you didn't bring it today. You always bring it. <laughs> oh, okay, you have you have made uh, photocopies of the relevant portions. Okay, so it refers to uh, the loss of chieftaincy in Ghana, and this is by Justice uh, Alan Brobe. Now. In page 34, he writes that when a person becomes a chief, his life is not fully his own. His private life is subject to the dictates and demands of the stool, the skin, the customs and traditions of the people over whom he is a chief. Many of the things which he has to do will be subordinated to the dictates of the customs of the people. I know where you stand already because it is a standing rule for you. For the many years I have listened to you, you think this is ugly and it must stop. But why? Because the chiefs are the agents of development for the people. Yeah. See, the, a chief can acknowledge the delivery of development projects by a government to his people, a community, and even ask for more. But what the Constitution doesn't allow the chief to do is to proceed beyond that premise and publicly endorse a party, a candidate, or a sitting president when he's a presidential flag bearer fighting for re-election, as we have today, and we did have in 2016. Mm. And this thing, this subculture, uh, and I have to choose my words carefully, I know, that it's just some nuisance value, you know, uh, cuts across the political divide, and the politicians appear to be enjoying it. There's a history to why the 1992 constitution brought into being novel justice broby the book you were referring mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that's it very well article 276 and article 94 3c are novel they've never appeared in any of our previous constitutions and there's a history why we decided as a people to try as much as possible and insulate chieftaincy from the implications and repercussions of partisan politicking or politics. See, we don't have time, so I will just be using one or two examples. And going back to history before I come to the modern days. This is a daily graphic, Saturday, October 2nd, 1957. Headline, Ochin I will be neutral in politics. The Ochin Hinen Osajifu Ufuriata II declared at Chibi yesterday that now that politics in Ghana have taken a new shape, he will not give his support to one political party as against the other. He made a statement at an emergency meeting of the Standing Committee of the Ochiman Council. The committee was discussing, and note, the decision of the National Liberation Movement to convert the movement into a political party. That's what the then meant the new twist in our politics. 
See, another one here. October 23rd, 1957. Cabinet is to discuss Ochihini. Hmm. And I'm sure the minister was referring to some things. He, he consciously didn't give specific names, and I understand why. The prime minister, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, yesterday gave the undertaking that he will consider with his cabinet as soon as possible the government's withdrawal of recognition from the Ochinhine Osajifu Ufurata II. The government uh, interfering mm -hmm. in that institution. You, you, you understand? And, and something had happened. A lot. Yes. Government and, says. And, and Nkrumah was deliberate about trying to infiltrate and uh, bring them down. Because he had had a history of problems with some of them in the course of the independence movement. And he had promised to deal with them. Where he said the uh, chiefs will run away and leave their sanders exactly. behind. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now this is June 7th, 1958. Government say, Ochihini's recognition not to be restored. Appointment of Dankwa cancelled. Revenue for state is withheld. You get a point? And many more. And this is just a classic example. Nkrumah had plenty problems with even the Asante mm. Council. To the extent they got to a state of two for then, actually, more or less, wiped out the Bafu Akutu Osei's stool. Mm. You saw here, it's published here. Not just Nkrumah, subsequent to Nkrumah, because Nkrumah government ended up destooling some of the chiefs right. and installed mm. new ones. Mm. So when the NLC took over, they also went on that screen by trying to restore some of the people right. and destooling other chiefs that were perceived as Some of those problems have followed us to today. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So that is the history. In the Champo era, these chiefs, I mean, they are enormous. When the Unigov campaign was put out there, they were all over the place. Look, the highest level of chieftaincy sycophancy was displayed then. And yet, they are subject. You can't unite your subjects when you conduct yourself that way. Mm. Justice Rubey has explained it fantastically mm. here. So we came to the juncture in terms of our history. That look, let's insulate this institution. I'm a Republican. I don't have too much love or admiration for chieftaincy. Mm. But because I'm a realist, and the Constitution has guaranteed their existence, and as a Democrat, I must accept the reality and live with it. But, you see... When we did all this, our chiefs continuously, with impunity, violate the Constitution as well as the Chieftaincy Act. They, they appear not to give a damn. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but they don't mind anybody. And it is not good. Look, the attribute, one key attribute of a chief is the wisdom that you must bring to bear on your conduct and in your community. A conciliator. Yes, you must unify your community. So if you mount a political platform or if a party sets up a certain debate or whatever, and you go there, go beyond acknowledging delivery of development projects to your community and asking for more, but proceeding to endorse a candidate, whether a presidential one or a non-presidential one, it's against the spirit, the letter and spirit of this constitution. Now let's go into the Constitutional Review Commission. Mm -hmm. This matter came up yep. and was discussed thoroughly. Mm -hmm. And the commission had to come to the stage and say, look, active party politics actually is not properly defined or sufficiently defined in the constitution. Justice Brube also admits that. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, Justice Brube was a member of the Consultative Assembly. Right. For, I think was the chairman of the Legal and Drafting Committee. Interestingly, if you go into the Constitutional Review Commission, they dealt with the matter and they tried to give some meaning. Now, I want to read that portion. Right. This is paragraph 116. It says, the commission observes that the legal and drafting committee of the Consultative Assembly attempted to define what constitutes participation in active party politics by chiefs as follows. Active party politics means A, being a member of a political party, B, standing for election to any office to which a person may be elected as representative of a political party, C, holding office in or forming a political party. Now, the two most relevant ones are here. D, listen carefully, says so speaking in public or publishing anything in writing to the public for or against a political party 
or the candidate of a, a political party in any election, he contributing in cash or in kind towards the funds of a political party, or conducting oneself in public in a manner likely to suggest identification with or opposition to a political party. You get my drift? Mm -hmm. And Justice Brobe, who was there? You know, any court litigating on this or dealing with this matter will be going back to look at what the consultative assembly uh, proceedings and definitions were. This is what Justice Brobe points, points out. This is Article 276 and 94.3c are some mm. of the novel provisions in the 1992 constitution. No similar provision appeared in any of the previous constitutions of the Gold Coast or Ghana. All right. From the knowledge of the author, as a member of the Consultative Assembly and chairman of the Legal and Drafting Committee of that Assembly that produced the current 1992 constitution, it can be stated with some certainty that the policy reasons that led to the enactment of these provisions were this. First, a chief is a person who unites his subjects mm -hmm. and all persons living in his domain. If he takes active part in party politics, he will divide the people under him be between those who support his chosen political party and those who do not support his party. Now, after we've done all this, and this part of the country's problem, mm. the white paper, the government white paper, Interestingly, this is what the government had white paper said in chapter 10. Mm. Traditional authorities, issue five, chiefs and active party politics. Government accepts the recommendation that article 277 of the constitution be amended to define concisely the meaning of active party politics in article 276 of the constitution. Consequently, government accepts further that the Active party politics be defined to mean, quote, openly and personally joining or taking part in the activities of a political party by wearing their peripheralia and associating with the executive and members of that party, mounting party platforms to galvanize support for the party at their meetings, achieve being a card a bearing member of a political party, and also holding an executive position in a party at any level. You see, even this government, the white paper, veered a little away from the recommendation DNE, okay the consultative assembly's definition okay okay mm. some cowardly retreat like oh just put something there but it is still not stringent mm. and that's why i think the politicians love okay and this uh, report this white paper mm. i'm sure it's in abeyance because there was supposed to be a, yeah. an implementation mm -hmm. committee. That's right. Uh, I don't know the status. I have to be honest with you. I tried double checking yesterday. Mm. I couldn't get much. Well, but the, uh, the Attorney General's department, they suggest that mm -hmm. uh, they pick the portions, bits and pieces, as and when uh, it is necessary to look at. But so far, they've not, we spent, uh, we spent they've not pursued anything in yes, this yet. How much, mm. how much did we spend? We spent millions of dollars. Yes to do this and yeah. that's the point i'm making that that's mm. subculture yeah. we do things fine things we are not lost beautiful ones and then we are unable to enforce and enforce them and here's constitutional review commission was for me an important landmark yeah. in terms of our mm. constitutional evolution yeah. but we're, we're treating it with kid gloves that's right. so the chiefs <laughs> are out there running route you know to be honest with you misconducting themselves <laughs> I didn't want to say they have become a bunch of licensed irritants. Mm. I didn't want to say that. But that's the hard fact. And it's about time they are told so in their face. Okay. Look, in their faces, it doesn't matter which, which chief. Mm. Okay? High, low, middle, it doesn't matter. Right. The principle is non-negotiable. This constitution uh, the, yeah. went to a referendum. Right. 